Dear friends, I have fond memories of my speaking at this Equality Gala as Maltese Minister for Equality, and here I am addressing you once again, this time as EU Commissioner for Equality. Pride Month means many different things to all of us, but it is always a celebration. And like tonight's gala, it is a celebration because it physically brings people together. Prides are extremely powerful, both for those who participate, but also for those who do not or cannot. As the late Harvey Milk said, rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. And when millions of people from the LGBTI plus community march together during the summer months each year, it is impossible not to hear. Of course, this year is very different. Nearly 500 Pride events have been cancelled and our ILGA European Equality Gala is certainly not the same as when we celebrate our friendship and commitment to equality physically together. But this year it is just as important as ever to make your voices heard, if not more. We continue to have a lot to do before we can say that equality for the LGBTI plus community exists. For the fifth year in a row, Malta, the country I know best, is ranked at number one on ILGA Europe's Rainbow Europe Review. As a minister, I fought for equality for everyone in my country on every single day of the job. I am proud of the progress we made. But in the EU 27, when it comes to LGBTI plus equality, the picture remains very mixed. For instance, support for LGBTI plus equality ranges from 31% in Slovakia to 98% in Sweden. And although average EU support increased from 71% in 2015 to 76% in 2019, this regrettably also means that one in every four citizens still do not support equality, regardless of a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, or sex characteristics. As the first European Commissioner for Equality, I pledge to you that I will continue my fight because I know the difficulties LGBTI plus people are facing and they are as diverse as the community itself. The most worrying phenomenon is the increasing amount of violence against LGBTI plus people. We have seen attacks on prides and homophobic intimidation during carnivals. We have seen LGBTI plus free zone stickers being distributed. And we have seen the adoption of anti-LGBTI plus resolutions clearly aimed to intimidate and spread fear with populist slogans used at the cost of vulnerable minorities. And if we thought things couldn't get worse, the coronavirus crisis has had a disproportionate impact on so many people in the community. In Slovenia, I have seen reports that young LGBTI plus students are more at risk of homelessness, with student dorm closures, many losing their student jobs, and with families who do not accept them because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. I have had reports from Romania that some LGBTI plus NGOs have moved their activities from advocacy and community support to opening food banks to support LGBTI plus people in more precarious living situations. This should not be allowed to happen in our European Union. By the end of this year, I will present a new LGBTI plus equality strategy. It will reflect the work that has been going on, including the Commission's consultations with stakeholders, such as last year's high-level conferences organized with the Finnish Presidency of the Council and the Commission's Eurobarometer on Discrimination and the research carried out by the EU Fundamental Rights Agency, who presented an in-depth report, the second LGBTI survey this year. 
important topics that will be addressed are education, work, health, safety, families, society, and the worldwide international context. But if we are to make real progress, we need to collaborate with others, as we are doing with the European Parliament and 150 members of the LGBTI plus intergroup, the largest intergroup in Parliament. And I will continue my work with member states who have competence over many of the areas that are crucial for the lives of LGBTI plus people, such as family law and legal gender recognition. I will continue to encourage them to adopt measures that strengthen LGBTI plus equality. But today, most of all, I want to pay tribute to organizations like yours, Ilga Europe. Without you and the tireless efforts of activists all over Europe and across the world, no change would be possible. It is crucial that civil society organizations like yours have a voice in shaping the measures that support you and improve the lives of LGBTI plus people in Europe. I am sorry we can't be together to celebrate tonight, but I am with you all in spirit and I am doing everything I can do to support the community from where I am. I am not able to see you, but I can still hear your voices loud and clear. Thank you.